This is an Ellis Mowers and More small engine repair. Stay connected on Instagram and Facebook at Ellis Mowers and More. Comments or questions? Leave them below or email me, ellis at ellismowers.com. Parts used in today's repair are found using the links in the description below. And as always, like and subscribe for more small engine content. Today's repair is going to consist of um, what I am calling one of the most unusual MTD lawn tractors I have ever seen. This is a garden tractor, excuse me. Uh, but it is a lawn chief. It has or had an 18 and a half horsepower opposed twin. It now has a 20 horsepower V twin. Uh, a 14 speed shift on the go. Yes, that's right. This is a high low Vera drive transaxle on this machine never seen one before probably never see one again the thing that's going on with it it runs drives and cuts y'all saw a little bit of a teaser whenever i uh did the mower fine video on this and then as well as the lot that came with it but what's going on with it is that uh, i'm pretty sure that the guy who had it he also was another small engine guy um, he just put the generic blue tractor supply belts on them uh, on the transmission when he replaced them because I guess he was having drive issues and I think that's the problem what's happening is if, like I said if you all saw in the teaser video it just stops pulling uh, especially in high gear uh, at high, higher speeds um, that makes me think that yeah, and I could see the front belt kind of wobbling so I think that there's too much variance in the belts uh, and it doesn't take much on these MTDs. Y'all heard me many a times, and y'all have seen me try many a times and fail when I ever use aftermarket belts on these machines. You have to, have to use OEM belts on these MTD Veradrive transaxles. Otherwise, you will have nothing but issues. Trust me, I've learned and I know. So we're going to get... Uh, belts ordered for this that's basically what we're going to be doing on this machine I'll give you all a walk around of it because it's really cool nonetheless and we'll see what's going on with it and just kind of the features and whatnot that it has uh, which are unlike any other MTD lawn tractor ever seen so let's go ahead and get started I'll give you a walk around we'll get the belts swapped out after that hopefully they won't be too bad and the access will be okay all right so here it all is again we've got to fix some tires just put some atf in a couple of these tires because they go down after a couple of days but this is a 46 inch cut lawn chief no joke high low vera drive transmission who'd have thought right i put a battery in it it runs it uh drives and let me see if it'll crank back up i just finished the well it won't crank with the parking brake down but that's got a three blade 46 inch deck on it, just like you see here. Uh, everything looks to be in pretty good shape on it. The belts are all right. Um, probably not gonna have to worry about changing them. I just have to change the drive belts. Ah, gotta choke a little bit. It runs pretty good, it just surges just a little bit. I do need to check to see if it's charging, which I'll do in just a second. But it's a garden tractor, seven speed on the side here. Got to fix that panel. Just put a washer or something on it. High, low, what it's doing, I think I can show you if I put it in high gear and a high range. It'll just, you can, it'll pull and then it'll lose some steam. I don't know if I can show it to y'all fully, but I'm going to see if I can. I don't want to... Woo. But it occasionally just does it. And if you look down there, you can see the belts are kind of vibrating and doing what they shouldn't be. So, again, it is just, just running just a little bit off. Your PTO is a manual PTO, and your height adjustment lever is right here. And I think we have to adjust the deck on it a little bit. Fix some tires and all that good stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and get get to business. The main portion of this I'm going to show you all is the drive belts. Not a very popular mower or 
there weren't a lot of these made but hey you might have one of these and need to see how the drive belts are uh, oriented on them so i will show you all that coming up one of the other obvious things that do doesn't really happen much around here uh, where I live since we don't really plow is that this came with a plow so that's not really a, a popular item around here the first time I've ever had one of these too and I just wanted to make note of that as well not really extremely useful in my area unless you're doing something associated with like gravel work or something like that but somebody will be looking for a plow in this area and it's just a matter of finding that right buyer probably not going to sell it separate because i'm not shipping it and i don't want to try and sell it separate because i'm probably not going to get any money for it separate i'll just sell it all just like this it may take me a minute to find somebody but somebody the right buyer will come along and want one of these just a cool find. I just thought that y'all would enjoy that as well. So I've done a couple of housekeeping things on this before we get into replacing the drive belts. One thing I did is I put a little bit of a spacer right here for this gear shift because this plastic is a little bit brittle and had gone through the screw here. And so it was just flapping around. So I put a little spacer here to help reinforce it a little bit. If I do any more than that, I'm going to be fighting a losing battle, so we're going to let it ride like that, and it should be just fine. It's not going to be perfect, but this whole tractor is not going to be perfect. Either way, we're going to, that has been resolved. I have to keep an eye on this left rear because it did go down in a day. I might have to dump more ATF in it. I've already done ATF in the other three tires. Uh, well, I did them in all four. Three of them are uh, holding there just fine. That one's the only problem, child. In terms of getting the deck off of this, there's this rod here that runs through where the front mount is. And you just have to take the two clips that are off on the inside of the rod, slide the rod out. Uh, that won't fall yet, but what you can do is take off this hanger, uh, this hanger, and oh, got two on the other side. Hang tight, we'll do it right here. I've already done the back ones. We can lift this up. We've taken the belt off, and because since this is just a double stack on the left spindle over here, you just have to take it off of this main pulley because it's a two belt setup. This bottom belt's a little bit frayed, but it's still tight. We're gonna let it ride. These it could it could stand to do deck belts, but again, talking about the condition of the mower, this is gonna be a cheap garden tractor for somebody, so uh, we're going to put the necessary belts on it in order for it to be a good solid functioning mower the deck belts probably will not be put on this but all you got to do now is slide the deck out of it that should give us good access to the uh, belt relatively good access at least Got the engage cable too, sorry. Uh, let's see. Just gotta take this wing nut off. Take the cable off and tuck it away, pull it out. One more, one more thing you got to take off. I didn't realize the tension pulley here comes with it too, or does not come with it. So we've got to take this clip off and this little bearing thing out to take that portion of the belt off. And now we're clear to pull it out. This is a, compared to other older MTD decks, this is a piece of cake. Uh, just tuck this 
out of the way for now. Tuck that out of the way, and what needs to happen next is... I'll let y'all take a look at this setup here. I'm going to grab my light, and we'll look at it while we got it underneath here, or while we are underneath. So, looking underneath here, I'll show you what we got. So, we got two belts. Again, like I said, he put the generic 5 8 blue belts on here. Here's your Veridrive pulley. And when you put the park brake down, it releases the tension on this front belt. And then you can get that one off. Hopefully we can get it off without having to take these guide pins off. And then we'll muster getting the back one off. So what's happening is when this is in higher speeds, since these are not the correct belts, their width is a little bit different and a little bit off. And what that does is it causes the very drive pulley to act up. So this, in this case, this one is working, uh, not working when we have it in high gear in the high range it will stop pulling hills because this belt right here gets tight on the bottom i think it's the one on the bottom here to the point to where this one right here gets so loose that it just stops pulling the transmission i'm i'm fairly certain that's what's going on here so what we can do let's see if i can do this real quick So I've set the park brake, and that greatly loosens up this uh, this belt here. Now, what I could, what I'm going to attempt to do is just pull this belt off, this pulley. I think I can get it. Let me see if I can muster it through that hanger there by finagling the finagling the. Uh, Pin. Maybe not. Maybe so. Here we go. Let's try. If we can do it, that'll be. I'll save me a little bit of time here. Almost there, actually. There we go. Okay, so that's good. So that's that one. The best thing to do with this back pulley is, I don't know if y'all can see it, this back belt, we're going to take it off the tensioner here. So that tension spring is kind of all the way out. So what it does is it doesn't provide enough tension on this belt in order to get the uh, blades off, or the... Uh, the drive portion of this working very well. So let me see if I can get back here and get this belt off of the rear pulley, which I can. That was pretty easy. And now we're going to do like we did this first belt and see if we can just get it through this guide pin here without having to take, take off anything. I think we can. We just have to be really careful here. Part of me thinks that this drive pulley would come off with just a little bit of help from that. So I'm going to try and work this belt around this guide pin really quickly. If I can't do that, I'll rejoin y'all when it comes to trying to get this belt off. But hopefully y'all see the premise of it. And then for this front pulley here, what you've got to do is take, I think it's 5 eighths. It's either 5 eighths or 9 sixteenths. 
see where this guide is around this guide plate is around the drive pulley here what you've got to do take this off lower this pulley a little bit so that you can get this belt out from around the top portion of this drive pulley and once you do that uh, we should be able to pull it if it is it across the steering shaft here no so we should just be able to pull it straight back to get it off not bad considering that other very drive setups are terrible so I'm in the process what has happened is this bolt right here well I took it off but the pulley is not coming off just because it's 20 plus years old these MTD pulleys don't like to come off very easily nonetheless what I did is I actually took this mount here there's just four screws holding it pushed it forward and uh, popped it up a little bit and I was able to get the belt off from around the side of it or around the front of it and so and I pulled it back through uh, once I got it under this pulley I pulled it back through the here and got it off still working on oh we've already got the back belt off too so uh, or we're almost through getting the back belt off we've got it off the very drive pulley I was able to get it around these guides but what needs to happen next is I took the little ball things off the park brake and the gear shift taking the two screws out that hold this little top plate on because it runs through the gear shift so I'm going to take that plate off we're going to grab the tripod really quickly and I'm going to do my best to show you all how to get this out of here so what it's got to do is it's actually got to come up and over this drive uh, the gear shift there I think I just showed it to y'all so it was in there like this. Got to come up and over it in order to get it out. Now, let me show you also why OEM drive belts matter on MTDs. So here is a generic 5 8 by 53 belt that was on the front side of this garden tractor. Here is the organ version of the belt. Can y'all see the thickness difference right there it's about maybe like a width of a ah, man not even a quarter or a nickel probably like a width of a dime or a um, penny really you think oh that doesn't make any difference yes it does trust me so this is the front belt like i said look at the difference in thickness here so because you know when you add this belt up and add a little bit of a thickness difference in the rear belt which i'll show you here in just a second you get maybe about a quarter's worth of difference in um width between the two belts that will be enough to cause issues with the very drive pulley so We'll get this other belt over here, and I'll try and show you the difference in this thickness too, really quickly. You can kind of see it's about, well, let me get you on the other side, that way you can see better. Again, about the width of a penny difference. Because I think they're like 19 30 seconds versus a 5 8. So they're only like a 30 seconds or a 16th. But like I said, that's the difference between these two. Your two belts, this is your rear belt, 7540446. I'll put, uh, well, this is 75 002. This is an organ belt. You can use, um, obviously, you can use OEM MTD belts. But you can use Stens, Rotary, and Organ. You're just fine. Um, your. M, uh, 754-0280 is going to be your front belt on this. I'll put links below to the part numbers 
y'all have to do the vetting as to whether or not they're OEM or OEM spec belts from a reputable aftermarket dealer. Because a lot of times you look on Amazon or eBay, it'll be like a new old stock or something along those lines. So we're going to get the correct belts on here. We'll probably go ahead and put the deck and everything back on it. I'll show you the belts set up after I put everything on here. We're going to put the rear one on first because it's got to go furthest up the drive pulley. And then we'll put the front one on. And then we'll see if we have everything situated and give everything a try. Make sure everything drives well. And then we'll come back and hopefully have a mower that is almost ready for sale. So we're putting on the new belts. The rear belt, like I said, you have to slide uh, around this gear shift down underneath. Now, what you do first, the first pulley you put on is going to be your Vera drive. Since these OEM belts are a little bit thinner, they, uh, well, they're taller in terms of uh, height, but thinner in terms of width, if that makes any sense. They slid on through these guides a lot easier. Then what I did is I put it around the rear drive pulley here for the transaxle, put it in high gear. What that does is it allows the very drive pulley to go as far back as possible. That allows you to get the belt onto the rear, uh, this tension pulley easier. Now, to put the front belt on, I think we can, oh, Let's see if we can lock this in. Okay, we can lock it in with the park brake. What that does is it pushes this pulley as far forward as possible so that we can take the main pulley or the front drive belt and put it on easier. For the front drive belt, we're going to put it on the front pulley first and then we'll put it on the Vera drive pulley. And I'll show you that setup in just a second. All right guys, so the OEM belts are on, or OEM spec, whatever you wanna call them. Got the bolt put back in. I just removed the remainder of the deck right now, just so that we can make 100% sure that these belts are good before we assemble everything back. Like I said, it just went, went through, just like I mentioned here, um, it worked out. I just bolted this area back up after I sent it through there and uh, also got it through the Vera drive pulley here. No biggie. Like I said, we bolted the main pulley back on. I've got this sitting up so that it doesn't get caught on anything and we're just going to be able to drive it around. I can already feel that it feels tighter on the pedal doesn't necessarily mean anything, but uh, I would think that that would be a good sign of the belt working better. So let's see if we can crank it up here. It takes a second. clean to do on this. Okay, here we go. Interesting. So it tried to tried to move forward on me in low range. It's running better there, but it's trying to move on me just a little bit. Y'all can see. Might be because we just need to give them a nice little run here. All right, here's high range. Man, they, it engages a lot better though. 
Let's just go all the way to 7. Cruising down the drive here. Let me see if I have to break it. It wants to continue moving for some reason. Might be because the brakes are going. It shouldn't be trying to move at all. But we might check the brakes. Because we do have the right belts on it now. There we go. So it stopped there. Well, I just need to wear it, wear these things in. Can we make the turn? Yes, we can. We're gonna put it in seventh. Because it, remember it died out when we went up the hill here earlier. Yeah, we're good. I just gotta figure out why it's trying to move still on me right here. I just need to give it a good run across the yard. do that. We're not moving there. Now yeah, we're getting there. creeps, but it's not creeping too bad. And the good news is it's also um, cleared up the carb, so I may not even have to worry about that. It is surging just a tiny bit right there. But we're going to give this thing a run across the yard. Obviously not today. But we are much, much better than we were. So. That's good. Um, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Put the deck back on it. And uh, once I do all that, we still need to put an ignition. Uh, what would that be called? voltage regulator on it and after we do that we're gonna make sure this left rear tire is good and i think uh and we're gonna level the deck he's already he already had the blade sharpened before i even bought the mower from him because uh, he was trying to sell it and then the the drive issue kept messing up on him and uh when he said he put them generic blue belts on there i knew exactly that i just need to put some belts on this thing and it would be driving much better Y'all just saw me pull the hill. We weren't able to pull them hills with them blue belts on it. So, thumbs up. The main issue we had is fixed. Let me get this deck back on. We'll get this voltage regulator on next. So in terms of getting this voltage regulator off, it's just a matter of unplugging this red wire and this yellow wire from uh, the stator and that should do what we need to do. We've got a couple of 10 millimeters we need to take off here on the top and the bottom. It's hard to show on this 
but just pop the other one off pop the new one on and you should be in good shape after that and uh, hopefully we'll have a charging battery after that uh, wiring wise if I look came on the other side everything I see looks like it's wired correctly because it looks like the wires are coming around like they're supposed to jumpering into the wiring harness just like just like it's supposed to uh, yeah from what I can tell so in theory as long as all the wires and everything are hooked up correctly which from what I can tell appears to be the case replacing the voltage regulator should fix it I would think that if we had an issue with the voltage regulator or if we had an issue with the way it was wired sucking up the battery it wouldn't you know be cranking as good as it is but we need to make it so that it is actually still charging the battery while we are running the machine uh, so you know that it's self-sustaining so to speak Either way, you can see that the voltage regulator is in and it is working correctly. It is charging around 16 volts, which is kind of high, but that's the way that the last one I had did too. So I'm in the process of taking off the hood here. These aren't the easiest to take off. A lot of times you can just, you know, crash them. You can just pull them off in like two seconds. They just have to take a few bolts off, two on the side here, two on the other side, uh, two on the bottom ones right there you have to access them from the bottom and you have to take the exhaust shield off in order to get to them so keep that in mind uh, so we're gonna should be able to just pull this hood off in one piece reason why I'm doing this is because the carburetor did not clean up it actually got a little bit worse so I'm gonna give it a nice good cleaning and hopefully that'll fix the running issues once I get those running issues fixed this thing is done so Let's see if I can pull this off. Easy enough. Not too bad. Just takes a little bit of time to get to this carb setup, unfortunately. So what, what we have to do next is pull this shroud off he has bolts holding in the uh, this it's just too bad because this mower was about 90% there and need that little extra to get fully finished I think I'm gonna pull the whole intake off because look if you look down down into there I don't know how well y'all can see it but there's a bunch of just dirt and stuff and I bet that mess is sucking it up or that's on the that's actually on the back side of the car but either way it's probably still sucking it up pretty good so we have just the bolts to get the the engine uh, shroud off and these little these little T T20s here. I'm going to take care of that and show you the um, under the hood and, or under the shroud and everything to get the carburetor off, and we'll take a look at that real quick. 
So this is the maybe I'll get lucky routine. I took the cover off and then there's three screws that are holding like a little plate. You can access the small jets up in here and there was a ton of dirt clogging up these jets and so I cleaned them out on the inside here with some carb spray and then I sprayed down into the small jets down here just to see if I could get any sort of action to where I could get those cleared out. If I can't get those cleared out from right here we are going to have to go under the into the carb and whatnot and clean those out. I know that's dirty. Um, trying not to spread a bunch of dirt and stuff around. Just trying to see if this quick fix will work because uh, it re really wasn't that far off. Sometimes it'd be clear, sometimes it would get gummed up. So I'm thinking that I've got a little bit, I think that the dirt situation was clogging me up a little bit. Not 100%. We're gonna pop this cover and everything back on here. Get all the dirt and mess off of it. There's a bunch of dirt that made its way into the intake here somehow some way even though the air filter was uh, on tight but like I said I think that's what my issue is coming from and see if I can get this thing to run smoothly let it run for a little while to make sure it doesn't recur have a recurring issue before we send it off that's better on my bolts let me stop there maybe I just need to uh, it's just always a little bit involved to take off the V twin but we'll get it let's go ahead and do it there's really no way to fix it otherwise so I apologize if you have come to see the carb situation just trying to get it knocked out. I know this video is also getting a little bit long as well. Got it over here on the table. What we've done, I've taken the whole intake off. I've done my best to clean it as good as possible. It was just caked in crud. And now what I've done is I've taken the, this is a Nikki setup. So I've got a little bit of junk on the bottom here. And I think what it's trying to do is it's trying to suck everything up through these jets. And what a lot of times what happens is, and I don't know if y'all can see that very well. These jets will get kind of gummed up, clogged up, and they will, as a result, not um, produce the amount of fuel up through them that they should be doing. So what I'm going to do, this area looks fairly clean. I think we've got everything clean up top now. Um because it's a pain to try and take off all this intake mess. Uh, it's not a pain, but if we got to do it, we got to do it. But what we're going to do is spray some carb spray from the top to get these emulsion tubes. Spray it from the side to get those. And then what we'll do also here is spray it through here. We'll also take a wire brush 
and see if we can kind of knock those out a little bit too because a lot of times what i see in these carburetors is that these holes right here will get um clogged up it'll still run but it'll surge and the sediment will cake inside these um those holes there so we're trying to prevent that so i'll keep on working i'll let you know the finished result here very shortly but the big thing is i think is this car bowl you see how dirty it is so i'm going to wire brush it on the bottom down there i think it's just trying to suck up sediment and it's slowly trying to clog these holes up so i think that's where we're at and uh be right back in just a second One thing I did was it had the wrong flywheel on it for this period um, engine cover. I put the right flywheel on it, which is a little bit thinner. And then so this is sitting down better, except for in the front here, just because of the way the intake is on this newer engine. What I've also done here is I've had to kind of rig the fuel pump a little bit mostly because that bracket didn't really jive with the way this fuel pump setup was with this valve cover and so i've got that set up a little bit weird but it works fine i put a fuel filter on it too so it's running much better now it's not surging it has that little pop here and there these v-twin carbs are sometimes a bear so we're gonna we're not going through the process of taking it all off again just to see if we can get that occasional pop out. Runs good. I'm going to blow it off, take some pictures, put the hood and everything back on it. We will finish this video up and we'll have a what will be to somebody a fairly decent garden tractor for the uh, for the money. Uh, probably, like I said, going to be about $600 lawn tra or garden tractor here. Uh, because overall it's in good condition and got the v-twin on it 46 inch deck manual pto uh, so got the new voltage regulator on it, all that good stuff so let me finish this up we'll finish this video up as well so i got a little bit of pop pop but better i'd say it's probably between 90 and 95 percent and it's not surging up and down like it was you can kind of hear it there it's all right don't forget it does come with the plow too so we've got that good thing going on a lot of other projects you see going on right here in the garage and we have an empty garage for once uh, that troy built is the only one that is not currently mine that i'm working on which is great but all things considered considering where this started and where it is now the lot that i got this in i got two engines two riders and two push mowers uh the weed eater turned craftsman rider basically i got my money back from the lot off of that now we have this lawn chief which is the money maker of the lot probably gonna list it for six hundred dollars since it has the plow I'd take as low as 500 for it. I need it. I need to let it go. It's an older MTD, even though it's a garden tractor with the high low trends. It's not going to be that popular of an item, uh, considering its age, unfortunately. And where I live, the plow ain't really much uh, much to do around here, since you don't really get a lot of snow. Hope y'all enjoyed it. I wish I had that carb just a tiny bit better. These V twins are a 
bear though trying to get them perfect um, most because of little bitty small jets. I know I didn't go into too much detail on this just because this video is getting really long and the main premise was for to me to put drive belts on this to get it to where it would actually drive correctly. But now we've got it all sorted out for the most part. Should make somebody a good garden tractor. It's always ran, drove, cut while I've had it. We've just made it better. Let me, let me know what y'all think about it. 14 speed shift on the go, high low, very drive transmission. The first and probably, I'm not going to call it the last because I'm sure I'll probably have one coming next week now that I've said that. But um, one of the very few that I, I, I didn't even know existed. Thank you all again for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this repair video. Catch you on the next one. Take care.